everybody, so welcome to today's video. I thought that um, I haven't really done a get ready with me video in forever. A lot of people have been asking about how I do my makeup and whatnot, and so I thought I'd update you guys, and I thought I'd also update you guys on like what's going on and how I'm feeling about life and all of that jazz. It's also like the coronavirus is keeping us quarantined, and as a YouTuber, I feel like it's kind of my duty right now to put some, something up, like a video up or something, because I'm bored. I imagine a lot of you guys are bored. I feel like I should probably put a video up. I already put on my foundation, which is these two right here, and some powder, translucent powder. And uh, I'm just taking my Tati Beauty eyeshadow palette, and I'm putting on some brown eyeshadow right here. And if you guys are wondering where I'm going, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm just bored. So America, how do you feel about matching and moving far, far away? Oh my God, guys, I'm so, so nervous. I have never, I'm moving like across the country, so I've never moved, I've never been this far away from my family or my friends ever. Um, I've always been driving distance to visit my parents and my brother, and now I won't be, I will now have to fly when I go visit my parents. I don't know anybody where I'm going. I don't know the area. I've never been to the state other than my interview. Like you guys have no idea how much I'm worried about the whole situation. <laughs> okay, these are my fears. My first and foremost fear is that no one will like me. I'll go there and no one will want to be my friend. People will think I'm weird and I'll be excluded from the group immediately or my teachers won't think that, won't like me or whatever. And you know, I had a really hard time in third year. I mean, like I had great grades and most of my evals were great, but like dealing with constantly thinking, do they like me? Does anybody here like me? Um, that was a lot for me to deal with and I'm going to a brand new institution and I'm just really nervous that people my age, like my own interns and my residents and everything, like they won't accept me. And I know that's like so dumb. Like that's something like a, a, like a sixth grader or a ninth grader thinks when they go to middle school or high school. But, but it's very much a real fear for me that, I mean, it's my biggest fear that they won't like me and I won't have any friends for the next five years. My next fear is I'm gonna be a general surgeon. So it's gonna be a possibility that you know, I'm gonna mess up or I'm gonna miss something and oh my gosh, that worries me so much. Like sometimes I'm like, what did I get myself into? I'm about to be a doctor and handle people's lives and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've literally been uh, reviewing online meded with my time off because I'm that nervous about not knowing or forgetting everything that I learned in medical school. So um, I'm so nervous about that. And then something that like, I'm kind of nervous about like it's in, it's in my head but that I'm like less worried about is um I don't know if you guys know this but general surgery is a really tough residency program uh, no matter where you go and uh, I think in the US it has an attrition rate which is a dropout rate of 20% so one out of every five people quits general surgery I don't, they just quit or they go into anesthesia or emergency medicine usually. So like, I'm not an idiot, you know, like I think about that. Like I, I thought about that obviously by now or that would have been really stupid of me to never completely dismiss that and still choose general surgery as a residency program. Like I know, I know that a lot of people drop out, which is why it was really important for me to find a program that was all about making you feel like you don't need to drop out. Okay, now I'm going to take my eye, my angled brush, and I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in dark brown. Now I'm gonna just do my brows really quick. One second. Your girl's gonna have an income now. I'm gonna have a salary. And let me tell you, $50,000, which is what most, you know, first year, first year general surgeons make, Especially in a place that is very affordable and since I don't have kids or, or anything that's kind of a lot for one person Even though I have loans and stuff. I've never had fifty thousand dollars before um, I've never lived with that much money and I think even if you took into account taxes and stuff I've still never had that much money before <laughs> 
So I'm really excited. Um, your girl gonna get some Botox. We're gonna get some new furniture for our apartment. We might get our hair did. We're gonna be living life. We're gonna have a salary, guys. Can you believe that? Little old America, 25 years old, finally has a salary. I'm gonna be making five digits. I don't know if the world is ready for that. That's something that I'm really, really excited for and to show you guys is to get a new apartment and put some new furniture in it and make it real, real cozy because if general surgery residency is gonna be as hard as I think, I'm gonna need a very comfortable apartment. So I can't wait to get, show you guys like the finished result and where I'll be living. This was a really nice apartment. I'm going to miss it so much. But I think I'm going to invest in better furniture. This table was $150 from like Craigslist or something. All right, I'm gonna do my lips real quick, guys. It's it's crazy because I'm not really scared about the work or the time or how tired I'll be or anything. Like, I I understood that when I signed up to be, you know, a resident. I'm going to be working really hard and I'm going to be making relatively little and it's gonna be stressful and it's gonna be hard, but you know, it, it does help that I am like by myself. So I don't really have to worry about my life affecting others. I feel like I'm really going to be dedicated to being a fantastic surgeon and fantastic doctor to my patients because I just am, I'm not distracted in any way. <clears throat> that said, um, like on a real note, you know, like I'm 25 years old, which is really young, relatively, but like I was thinking the other day um, as a kid, I always thought that by the time I was 26, and I'm turning 26 um, in May, <clears throat> I was going to be married and have my first child by now with a house. Um, literally none of those things are true or even close to becoming true. It just goes to show like, you can plan all you want, but nothing really is gonna go according to plan. I was talking to my friend <laughs> the other day and um, we're both single and we were just thinking like, I hope residency is like the time when it finally happens. Like when you finally meet somebody that you like enough to marry. Cause I have not met anybody who I want to marry in my entire life. That's really sad to say. And also I just feel like I'm such, I want to be such a strong, independent, like, lady for you guys. I want, I want you guys to have some role model in, in the world that, she, you know, she has her life together and she doesn't have a man. Not because I don't think you can have both, but because I want you to know that you don't need one. But I think that, you know, like, I mean, I think everybody, <laughs> everybody thinks about it wishes it would happen. Some people think it happens and doesn't go right. Some people it happens immediately when they're like 18. Some people it never happens. But yeah, I mean like it's something that I obviously think about. I'm a girl going into a surgical specialty. Your girl ain't like in some fantasy land, you know, where she thinks she's doesn't need anybody or whatever. I mean, I wish, I wish I didn't need anybody. I think everybody needs somebody. So this was Spice by MAC lip liner and this is Honey Love by MAC as well. And that is my lip combo. And something else that I wanted to talk about was somebody made this comment to me. Um, I was at somebody's birthday party and they were tur turning 26. And this like older guy who's like in his 40s was talking to us and he was like, I hope y'all are aware that y'all are living your peak right now. And we were just like, didn't you tell us that when we were 18? Are we still living our peak? Like, when does the peak end? That doesn't make any sense. People have been telling me that I'm gonna hit my peak since I was like 14 years old. I had such a horrible middle school and high school experience that I just get appalled when people say that, like that was my peak or those were the best years of my life. Like, what? What planet was everybody else on when I was eating in the bathroom alone in high school? <laughs> like, really though. This is what I use for eyeliner. I don't really like it that much. It's the Better Than by Too Faced liner, but 
as you can see it's like a felt tip but like the fuzzies are like scattered so I don't really recommend it but this is just what I use till it dries up people used to say that I'm I'm the best I'm ever gonna look is in high school maybe I should throw up a picture of me in high school right now I was a nerd I'm a nerd now I feel like a lot of nerds you know we didn't always have the best time in high school and like I don't plan on looking bad anytime soon and I just don't understand how some people are like Oh, high school's over. It's time for me to like stop caring about myself and I'm down I'm ready to go downhill for the rest of my life and that was my peak and I don't understand that. You you can still look good. You can still dress nice. You can still take care of your body, address your mental health, get a better job, be with a different person, be a better mother or father or whatever. Like you can always move up in life. Why, why are why do we say things like you peak in high school or whatever like this doesn't make any sense my dad he once told me that like every chapter in life has something to offer so your 20s they're exciting because everything is new and you figure things out and you're making new friends and then you're just figuring out adulthood but in your 30s you have your career and you can buy your house and you can start your family and you can start traveling like every chapter in life has something to offer and it's something to appreciate so i guess i just don't really know what people mean by peaking there's three options that i think that peaking means that was the happiest they ever were that was the most fun they ever had or that was the best they ever looked the best they ever look thing i don't feel like like that isn't some predestined thing that like, oh, I peaked, well, it's downhill from here. No, you can always take care of yourself. You can always eat right. And if you gain weight, you can always get back on track. Like, you can always care about the way you look. You can always get Botox, filler, go to the gym, dye your hair. Life isn't over till you're dying, so you can still look good. You can still feel good about the way you look. I mean, if you gain 50 pounds and you don't want to do anything about it, then, like, that's really nobody else's fault other than yourself. That isn't like high school being over his fault or whatever. If that was the most fun you ever had, I think that that's just a perspective thing. Do you think that house parties and drinking for the first time and having little responsibility is really fun? Then yeah, I guess then high school must have been a lot of fun for you. I honestly feel like people remember high school parties and whatever we used to do at high school is so much better than they really were. If you really think about it, <laughs> We were all poor, we were all idiots, inconsiderate, selfish, like no one was any, no one was real in high school. We didn't develop consideration for others until years later, so everyone was like a backstabbing person in high school. I mean, not everybody, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't miss that in about high school or college. I think people get better with age. They get more cons- actually, you know, never mind. I take that back. Alright, let me do this eyeliner real quick. I just kind of swoop it like that. Like that. I get asked all the time how I do my eyeliner. That's how I do my eyeliner. Alright, eyeliner is done. Kind of messed up on that side, but that's okay. And then third, if that's the happiest you've ever been, then I don't know. I don't really know what to say about that other than I just cannot really at all. Um, <clears throat> these are the Kiss Lashes in the style Teddy. They're like knockoffs of the Miami Lily Lashes. They're way cheaper, so go get them. This is the Duo Lash Glue in Black. The way I look at it is, I don't think I'm ever gonna be complacent. I don't think I'm ever gonna look at myself and just be like, I give up on my body, or I give up on my mental health. Um, I give up on my job. I give up on the things that I want. And I don't want that to like come off as rude because I do not understand everybody's life circumstances. Obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm, I live a really privileged life that I can care about only myself. There's a lot of people who have no choice but to worry about other people and like put themselves on the sideline. Um, <clears throat> but I can only really speak for myself and I don't really plan on peaking like accepting that that is the best that life will ever be until I'm dying. And I feel like that's the way to live life. You treasure yourself and you always try to strive for better and better 
and not, like not to the point where you're like psychotic but to a you know a healthy degree where even like your mental health is something that you think about and that you put as a priority in your life or your health especially that's something that a lot of people let go of i don't ever want to be like giving up on myself or ever feel like my life isn't as good as it used to be. It's always worth working on yourself and being your best self at all times. Even when you're 80 years old. I'll be 80 with my Louis going to the Bahamas with who, whomever. And I just, I just want every part of my life to be the peak. Uh, I don't ever want to be complacent or accept a worse life for me than something that I could have. And I really don't want anybody else to do that either. No matter what your situation is. You know, like there's always room to work on yourself. I am by no means perfect. I have a list of things on my board to practice every day. One of them being gratitude because I deal with chronic loneliness and dissatisfaction, I guess. So I have to practice gratitude every day. You know, like I don't live such a wonderful life where I'm like, yeah, life is wonderful. Why isn't everybody happy? No, I work at it every day because I want to always have a life that is something to look back on and be like, yeah, those are the best years of my life. These are the best years of my life. All the years are like the best years of my life. I have to work on it. I have to do a lot every single day. <laughs> to see that, um, but that's just my little spiel. I don't know if it makes any sense. Um, and this is the final look, guys. Just a little something, nothing crazy. This shirt is from Joa Brown, and these earrings are from Walmart. I hope you guys appreciated the video. If you have any comments or want to discuss anything, please leave it in the comments below. I don't get offended by much so uh, thank you guys for getting ready with me and sitting through this video i'm sorry if it was super long but i appreciate you guys so much and i will see you hopefully when this thing is over so goodbye everybody